Hey, 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 what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're doing well today. So I'm listening to myself a little bit, seeing if all of the audio has been set up correctly or not. If you guys can't hear me well, I need you to let me know in the chat. Let me know, hey, Mr. Rat, please turn up that audio, turn down that music, you know. It, let's see, because apparently there is something wrong. Nope. That should be perfect. All right, good, good, good. Everything seems to be working well. I'm going to mute myself now for myself at least because otherwise it's going to be very, very confusing. First of all, major, major thank you to Dirty Works Copyright Free Music. That's what you're going to be hearing in the background. And second of all, Massive, massive thank you to the entire Rat Pack for sending in your questions on mass. Now I'm going to try to answer as many as I can qualitatively, but of course I can't answer all of them in this video. I just don't have enough time. It's already uh, nearly midnight and I still have to go to bed because I have to get up early for work. Now, um, so you're rattling a little loud. Okay, yeah. Maybe this is this should be this should be good when it comes to, to voice. I'm sitting a little bit further away from the microphone. If I'm sitting a little bit too close, let me know. And let's see, let's start my friends. Alright, so there's a really good question coming in already, or there has a really good question come in. Let me unpin my own question real quick. There we go. And now we can read it. I studied your course in the field of bug bounty hunting uh, and I studied more things from other books and courses and I learned some ways to make recon but I have a problem that I can't collect all this in a real scenario. How to solve this problem? Well that question is twofold. Great question by the way. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you asking that. Uh, so first of all You've been training. You've been training on training scenarios where you know there's a vulnerability in the platform that you're hacking. If you don't know that for sure, then there's a problem with the platform that you're hacking, of course. Because you need to train on something that you know that's vulnerable. How otherwise are you going to learn the techniques, right? But that's technique learning. While you do that, you should start building your methodology for looking for these vulnerabilities and looking 
before how you can exploit them how you can find them even how you can find just an entry point that's one thing that's all of the vulnerability types now i pretty much preach that you have to start with a single scope target that's a really important one why is that so important so let's say that you have a massive massive scope right okay uh, and you have like 500 subdomains now let's say that you pick the right subdomain out of those 500 the exact right ones what are you going to look for next because of course you need to know what to look for before you can start looking for it in a much broader perspective what i always like to do is i like to keep it to a very business to business like application that has a lot of functionalities in it but only like one or two domains not too much and preferably like an api where i have access levels for broken access control uh information uh sorry idors i mean of course uh, so those are really important factors that you have to pay attention to. Don't be afraid, uh, like don't don't be don't be sad because it's a practice platform that you're practicing on. Now you're up against a real target. Who knows if it's vulnerable or not? If it's not vulnerable, it's not vulnerable. Could be the target. Could be you. Like maybe it's your methodology. You know. Oh, and I see that we still have that starting soon text up. That should go away. There we go. Much better. Uh, not that, that made a much bigger difference, but thanks for that question, my friend. I really, really appreciate it. Great question. How to bypass WAF? Well, there are basically different bypasses for WAF. But what you have to know is that WAF is, like any other firewall, just a rule set in its core. Like, for example, if I set up mod security from OWASP, they have the mod security core rule set, the CRS for mod security. And it's a pretty good rule set, but that has bypasses, that has ways to get around it. Same goes for everything, and you can look for specific bypasses for specific WAFs, but it's much better to learn how to recognize a rule set and to then try to bypass it by throwing, for example, all kinds of God knows what kind of silly stuff at it to try and trigger that filter and see exactly what gets filtered and what's not and how you can potentially bypass it. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. It's really not all that easy. You can look for specific vulnerabilities on that WAF that you're fighting, but much better is to look for vulnerabilities on a rule set and who to learn how to do it yourself even. Good question, my friend. Uh, that came from Augustine. And then we have Yunus asking, I get Keras authentication for accessing web server resource. This is logical. I have no idea. Kerberos authentication. Well, you do have Active Directory authentication for accessing re resources. Yeah, on on the web, that's that's definitely not unheard of. Um, you could pretty much hook anything up to your Active Directory domain. So I don't know if that answered your question. I hope so, my friend. Thanks a lot for the question. I'm sorry I wasn't able to answer it perfectly. Uh, Lexus asks, hey there, I know the question is not about cross-site scripting, but I cannot seem to detect a cross points but my own with Airmon NG. Airmon NG is not my specialty. I wish I could help you there, but unfortunately I can't. It's not a tool I use often. I don't do those types of assessments usually. So if you are looking for tools like that or guides like that, uh, I'm going to have to think of a few channels to redirect you to, but it's definitely not going to be mine. Maybe there's something up on David Bommel's channel about that for, from somebody who's used that, uh, who's speaking there. I have no idea. I'm sorry. I really am. Good question though, Alexis. Uh, another question, what do you suggest mid-level people do because they don't need the basics and also they can't do hunting in a real scenario? Well, mid-level, as he's like to call it, there is no real mid-level. The thing is, that's a myth. You have, of course, the entry level, which is what people always seem to say, but how do you define entry level, right? And how do you define mid-level? How do you define a senior? Like... The, you can say, okay, you are not a mid-level because you haven't found a real buck yet. You're not a senior because you haven't found a hundred bucks yet. Uh, it's really all arbitrary, basically. But I get your question. You're basically saying, what if I have some knowledge of bugs already? Doing, like, basic hacking, try hack me. Um, doing some bug bounty courses, etc. So I've known 
how the vulnerabilities work in essence how can i turn that into a real life bug right if i get that question wrong feel free to let me know well the thing there is that you need to know how to look for these vulnerabilities because knowing how to exploit them is one thing but knowing how to look for them is a totally different story and you can easily google this you can easily google how to look for sql injection how to look for cross-site scripting there are guides out there eventually you'll have to find your own way though but all of those guides can amalgamate to something beautiful so try to look for that how can i look for and that might increase your skill level to where you want to be. Hell yes, I finally made it to the live stream. Hey Sam, how are you doing? Good to have you here, my little rat. Uh, let's see, what's your opinion on Hack the Box certified bug bounty hunter? Well, as much as I like Hack the Box, I'm gonna speak freely here, my friends. Anybody who certifies you as a bug bounty hunter, either you only do it for yourself or they're full of crap. Now, the thing is, Hack the box, they never say that this will get you a job or whatever. This will just certify for yourself that you know how to look for specific vulnerabilities, etc. So it's definitely a good path. It's a good learning experience, but the certification itself is kind of bullshit. It's kind of just like a certification of completion to me. Like, why would I need to certify myself to anybody that I'm a bug bounty hunter, right? My results should speak for myself. That's the thing. Great question, by the way. That being said, their pen testing path, their pen testing certification, much, much better. That's much more on the mark. They teach you about PTES, they teach you about all that goes around pen testing, which is really great because there's a lot being said about exploits. But for example, in my certification, I really teach you how to do. Uh, the how to use the different methodologies out there OSS, DMM, NIST, the OWASP guides, all of these methodologies are things that we're going to look into. Now, the order of things might be a little bit strange, but it's hard to order that correctly, right? Now, great question, great question. Sim, been wondering this what type of payloads can you use to exploit APIs, cross site scripting, SQL injection, etc.? And how, where do you start? Whoa, that's a loaded question. Great one. You guys are really putting me to my trials here. So let's break that down. APIs, how to exploit them specifically. First of all, learn about the different API vulnerabilities. Stop looking for payloads that can exploit anything because while they might exist, they miss a lot. And that's the biggest disadvantage of the vulnerability scanner is it can't really interpret any of the results we as humans can so especially when it comes to apis we really need to know how to look for these these uh, um, let's say oddities like if i enter a percent sign oh suddenly my application crashes 500 server error returns from the api what could that mean what's happening here what's happening in the background always be on the lookout for that when it comes to cross-site scripting and sql injection cross-site scripting they say enter a random string, look for a reflection, try to determine the cross-site scripting context that you're in and try to determine a payload that you can craft which works in that context. Uh, yada yada yada, all big and beautiful, but if you're not into that stuff, I can totally understand that if you only want to cover the basics of cross-site scripting, also very possible. You'll still have to learn about context, though there is a cross-site scripting guide on my channel, uh, so feel free to have a look at that, um, but basically, what it comes down to is single quote, double quote, back tick, greater than sign, and then a uh, broken image or something like that. Uh, so image source equals x, for example, as an HTML tag. Cross-site scripting, what you'll do there is you'll, you'll look for uh, reflected cross-site scripting or stored cross-site scripting, depending on how you enter the attack vector, and you look in different contexts as well. They say use a polyglot for that, but don't use a polyglot, my friends. It'll trigger so many filters, it's not even funny anymore. Just use your own attack vector, craft it a little bit and change it and enter that in every single input field that you see. Why? Because you might store your name now at this moment with that specific attack vector, but much later down the line, you might be storing it, it, it might be recalling that thing that you stored in the beginning and you might not even remember oh 
my name is that, but you might see, oh, there's a broken image here. So 